And you can say, I like Mika, I don't like Mika, good parts, bad parts, the whole thing. Regulation is rarely perfect. But it does make clear what the rules are, and that is one of the underpinnings that's necessary for banks to come into the game. Having at one point managed north of $50 billion at Circle and worked with every bank that would even consider working in digital assets, I can tell you they all want to do this. There's nobody that would tell you, I don't want to operate in this greenfield space with lots of opportunity and great people and new technology. But regulation has been a headwind. So what do you guys think about regulation? And how is that evolving? And if you have a view on Mika, great, and how that might impact potentially derivatives. But in general, this is one of the hottest topics, I think, out there for the adoption and growth proliferation of digital assets. No, absolutely. I mean. You know, we've been talking about different products that bring institutional investors into the space. Regulation is top of mind for everyone. Um, you know, I think Meek is a great example. Um, you know, Europe was very fragmented uh, from a crypto regulatory framework standpoint. Uh, Mika will be bringing, what, 30 countries all together into one unified block. I mean, that's, that's something that as a... Uh, as a business owner or um, you know, someone that's really trying to grow uh, a venture within crypto, that, that gives you rails that you can build upon over the, the course of the next few years. It gives you some stability. There are challenges though. Crypto is moving, morphing, changing on a second to second basis. And it's a real struggle for um, even people that are within crypto to stay in front of it, let alone the regulators. So even from Mika's standpoint, there's still issues in terms of uh, DeFi, for example, that wasn't thought, <coughs> wasn't included within Mika when it was first created uh, back a few years ago. But there's something there. So it, we just need progress. We need thoughtful regulations that we can all build upon and grow. And I think, look, this industry is not short of blowups and, and people who've not done the right things or not run their business the right way. That's true of every industry. And there's a little bit of understandably baby in the bathwater scenario here. I think the important takeaway for this part of the conversation is that there's people who know what they're doing, who grew up in traditional finance, who have chosen to be in digital assets, who want regulation, want to know what the rules are. And that is, that's not an unfair request. Yeah, I think in the to community. Chris's point, as there is a uh, destruction, let, let's say, of the anti-crypto army and more bipartisanship, what, what would be really part of the value proposition of digital assets, which is transparency, auditability, there likely is a FINRA-style SRO that comes out of some bipartisanship. And yeah. because folks like Chris and Rob with all of their experience can kind of guide that properly, it, it'll just unleash you know, so, so much capital to this space. Yeah, and I actually think Meek is a great example of that. Really what you're seeing is an imperfect design. That's okay. Mm -hmm. The rules are there. And so now people are doing a lot of really impressive things that the world, quite frankly, doesn't know about yet, but it's coming. And I think we all look forward to the advent of, as, as well mentioned, institutional coming into the space being part of this and helping to grow the industry. Sorry, please I, go ahead. I know that it's, uh, I agree. Um, this is all happening on in two stories at the same time, right? We have ETFs and futures markets and traditional markets. We also have Coinbase, Kraken, Crypto.com. You know, uh, this is what happens when you have an asset class that starts with retail and has to swim upstream to institutional, to regulatory. Um, it's difficult and, and it's, I think what's unclear, uh, I like, love the SRO idea because then you could actually incorporate traditional institutions and crypto native institutions and have some way for them to meet. But right now, it's either you're buying an ETF or you're buying Bitcoin on Coinbase, right? And, and those two remain kind of weirdly disjointed from a regulatory point of view with each other. Um, so that, that's just early, early, early stuff. We're also hampered in the United States by the SEC and CFTC never having been kind of reconciled. And there's kind of a, you know, two outfielders running to catch a fly ball and it ends up landing Nobody on the field, it. right? Yeah. Um, and I can't remember who was the head of the CFTC right after the financial crisis who stopped that from happening. But and, at any rate, you, this doesn't exist in Europe, doesn't exist in, in APAC. It, it just creates this extra layer of 
intra agency competition that just makes things a little clunkier. And, and Mina's caught up too as well. They're they're ahead of us now. Yeah, they're great as well. Yeah, so you're talking about a truly, truly global asset class with very different states of emerging regulation, which ultimately leads leads to inefficient markets. Which if you're a sophisticated institution like somebody on the stage, no better place to be.